Greetings game fans, the game are here with you today and we're going to be doing my first video game review video on this channel. I'm going to be reviewing Pokemon Shield and uh, there will be spoilers for the game and late game so if you don't want to be spoiled on anything make sure you click away now and come back after you've beaten the game. I will also be talking about some of the post game scenes uh, so be prepared for that as well. So that being out of the way Pokemon Shield and Sword are the 8th generation of Pokemon games in the main line. Uh, the first on a home console, in this case, the Switch. Uh, they haven't really steered away from much of what they did great throughout the years. Still choose from your fav uh, choose your favorite of the uh, Fire, Grass, and Water starters. Still have your friends slash rivals. Still have to get through everything, get up and become the champion of the region. In this case, it's the Galar region, which is based on England. Um, you will see a lot of things that look Englandy. The names all sound Englandy. And a lot of the conversations between the characters is in English slang. Uh, so if you're not prepared for English slang, you might not understand everything that is being said in the game. Um, that being said, I watch a lot of British TV. I do understand a lot of the British slang, so none of it really went over my head. There were a few things that I wasn't quite sure what the characters meant when they said it, but that's what the internet is for. Um, again, like I said, they didn't change much as far as the basic storyline of the game. You still... You're, you're a young kid, get your first starter, but this time you don't get it from the professor, you get it from the champion of the region, Leon, um, who also gives the starter to his younger brother, your friend rival, Hop. Uh, names could be slightly better, but whatever. Um, so, we go on from there, and in this case, the gym challenges. Uh, there are eight gyms in the game, and I believe this is the first time in the Pokemon mainline series that between the two different versions of the game, two of the gyms are completely different. Uh, they're the same gym building, they're the same town, but in Shield, for example, you fight a ghost-type gym, where in Sword, you're fighting a fighting-type gym. And then later on, you fighting in Shield, you're fighting an ice-type gym, where in Sword, you're fighting a rock-type gym. So I believe this is the first time that's happened in the game series, um, but I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. Uh, so I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments down below. I do remember that in Gen 5, I think it was, the final gym was a dragon, no matter which one you got, uh, black or white, but the trainer was different at the end. Um, but it was still a dragon type gym, still everything else was the same throughout the gym, uh, except for the final trainer. Um, now, of course, in a new region comes a new Pokemon. Uh, and since they started doing it with the last generation in Alola, new forms of previous Pokemon. Some of these new Pokemon are great. Some of these new Pokemon, not so much. Um, I think one of the biggest disappointments for me, uh, especially after getting the Alolan form of Meowth in, uh, in Sun and Moon, was the uh, Galarian form of Meowth. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's a steel type. No. Uh, and then, to make matters worse, Berserker, its new evolution, right, moving right along. Um, not so much a fan of that. Uh, they did give a new form to, uh, Weezing as well. Uh, makes it look like the smokestacks from Industrial Thing. And even one of the Pokedex entries does say it took on this form when, during the Industrial Revolution. It doesn't directly say during the Industrial Revolution, but if you read it, that's what it means. Um, I know, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's, it, it makes sense to me. Um, so I'll give that one a pass, unlike Meowth. No, never again. Um, a, new a new Pokemon that I'm definitely not giving a pass is Ice-Q. Uh, it's a ice-type penguin Pokemon. Uh, when you first run into it, it has this block of ice on its head. It works very similarly to how Mimikyu worked in the last generation, so that when you hit it once, nothing happens, uh, it just breaks the ice block, and like with Mimikyu it was breaking the disguise, in this case it's breaking the ice block, and then after that you can hit it with whatever and then it'll start being damaged. Um, not a huge fan of that. Uh, but whatever, they gave it a shot on that one. Some people might like it. I'm just not a fan of it. Uh, all I'll say is the fossil Pokemon? That's all I'm going to say about them. Nothing more about that. No. Enough with the fossils. Uh, on the bright side, though, the fossil Pokemon in this generation are not str uh, not kept with the rock of type like they have been in every other generation. Uh, I don't think one of them is a rock type in this generation, whereas 
every other fossil Pokemon in the history of Pokemon had rock typing to it because, ooh, it came back from a rock. It's got to have the rock type. Ooh. Um, so finally, we're getting rid of the rock typing on Pokemon, on the fossil Pokemon. So thankfully for that. Uh, now let's move on to some of the better Pokemon in this game. Uh, these are all, all, yeah, I think they're all new. No, actually, one of them is, is a new form of a previous I happen to like. Um, let's talk about the new ones first. Now, one thing I will say is that for several generations, my favorite Pokemon in the Pokemon series has been Relicanth from Gen 3. Uh, in Gen 5, Joltik and Galvantula came close to taking over the number one spot, uh, but they've stayed in number two pretty much since uh, they came out. Um, now, with this new generation of Pokemon, they're fourth and fifth on my favorite list now. Maybe third and fourth, but um, they are no longer in my top two. Um, so I'll talk about some of those new ones right now. Uh, first one is the Choodle. It's a little tiny turtle, uh, water type, and it evolves into Dreadnaw, uh, rock water type. And uh, that became... I, I wasn't too big of a fan of Choodle at first. But then when I evolved Chudo into Dreadnaw and started using Dreadnaught, Dreadnaw stayed on my team throughout. And now even post-game, Dreadnaw is still on my team uh, as my false swiper to make sure that I can catch uh, the Pokemon I still need for my uh, Pokedex. Um, next up, and became my absolute favorite immediately upon seeing it, was Nickit. Nickit was just so cute. I just fell in love with this dark little weasel. Uh, and then it evolved into Thievil and got even cuter for as far as I'm concerned. I loved Thievil and Nickit. Loved them, loved them, loved them. They were my new favorite Pokemon until I came across the Impidimp line. Um, Impidimp himself isn't much to write home about. He's a cute little goblin-y imp, I guess you want to call him. Uh, I'd say he has a little goblin look to him as well. Uh, and then he evolved into my new favorite Pokemon of all time, Morgrim. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Robbie from uh, Gravity Falls. Morgrim. Uh, Morgrim is amazing and awesome and the greatest Pokemon ever made, and I love it, and I want him in every generation from now on. Please, Game Freak, give me this. Give me, the, give me this. Give me Morgrim from now on. I want him. Uh, Morgrim then evolves into the steroid-abusing Grimmsnarl, uh, which I still have on my team in post-game uh, as a dark fairy type. Very handy to have. Uh, so... That's really, those are my those are my favorites out of the new ones. I, I do like Corviknight as well as Steel Flying, um, so I'll give him as well, but just between those, it's it's really, it's it's the Thievil, it's the uh, Dreadnought, and it's the uh, Morgrim. They are, they are amazing, um, and I love them, and I want them in real life, and I really want a Morgrim in real life. I just, I just want a Morgrim sitting here next to me, playing with me the rest of this video. Um... So moving on from there, uh, the gym challenges were a little bit different uh, in this generation. What happens when you get to the gyms is you have to go through a challenge first. Uh, for example, the first gym, the grass type gym, you have to herd some wooloos into an area at the end of the room, uh, which will then break down the hay bale that's blocking off the next part of the room. Uh, along the way, you will fight gym trainers, uh, so there's not that much different. And then at the end, you will get to the uh, gym, the gym boss, and defeat them and get their badge. So they changed it a little bit. Instead of just walking through a gym, every gym now has some sort of challenge. Um, instead of just oh, walk through, fight this trainer, walk through, fight this trainer, walk through, fight this trainer. Oh, hello, gym leader. How you doing? Um, there's there's actually a challenge before every gym now. So I really like that. Um, uh, something else I really like in this game is the seeing Pokemon in the wild as you're walking around. Uh, so you can choose whether, oh, let's see, that's a Rookity over there. I'm going to go fight that Rookity because I need one for my Pokedex. Or that's a Blip Bug over there. I need a Blip Bug for my Pokedex. I'm going to go fight it and catch it. Uh, it helps a lot more post-game when you're trying to fill out your Pokedex. Uh, but it also means that if you don't want to fight a battle when you're going through an area, you can try and avoid them. Now, some Pokemon, like Stuffle, for example, uh, the fighting dark, I think he was fight, fighting and dark, bear type uh, that, that evolves into beware from the last generation, they will run after you if you see them. So you then have to avoid them if you don't want to uh, fight them. Uh, but a lot of the Pokemon are just kind of sitting around, hanging out, and uh, won't be bothered as you're walking by if you don't want to bother them. So that's actually a lot of fun. Uh, but the most fun that I've had in the new, in the new generation so far is in the wild area. 
the wild area is just awesome amazing and it's i think it's larger combined than the roots the rest of the roots in the game um and you can find largely evolved pokemon i actually i haven't caught it but i did see the uh, final evolution of machop machamp walking around in the wild so yes you can catch pokemon that normally you require to trade to evolve and that just was really awesome uh to see that they finally put that in there uh they don't make it easy mind you uh even if you're walking through there of like level 12 pokemon the first time you're in the wild area you can run into level 30 level 40 level 50 level pokemon um so it's not easy and unless you have a certain amount of badges you can't catch pokemon to a certain level uh, so that when you're so that you can't just go in with say a ghost type fight a normal type that only has normal type moves it can't hit you wear it down and catch your level 70 pokemon with a level 5 pokemon uh and then be able to sweep the game like that they don't do that they don't allow you to do that so it does give you some challenge as well um i enjoy the wild area the wild area is a lot of different areas each area the weather can be different which will bring out new pokemon in that area um, and each area has its own set of Pokemon that will spawn in that area. The wild, and also in the wild area is where you run into the Max Raid Battles, uh, which is the Dynamax or Gigantamax Pokemon. Uh, and it will always be you and three other players playing uh, to battle the Pokemon. Now, you have to knock it out, and then you have a chance to catch it. The first few Max Raid Battles I was in, I knocked it out. Threw a Pokeball, no problem, figured, okay, 100% catch rate on these things. It is not a 100% catch rate on the max raid battles. There is a chance they can get out of the, bat, the ball, and then they will run away, and you will not get them. So once I figured that out, I've been throwing Ultra Balls at every max raid battle I've been in, and I've caught every Pokemon since that one that ran away. So just be wary of that, but max raid battles, give a big thumbs up from me, double thumbs up, love them. Um, now, a couple of things is, a couple of last things I'm going to say is that they've introduced some new weird ways to evolve Pokemon. Um, take your mask. I forgot what generation he came from. I think he was Gen 5, but he's back, but with a new form for the Galarian region. In order to evolve him, he has to have taken at least 49 points of damage. Uh, so he has to stay with that damage taken. And then you have to go to this area in the wild area and then walk under this arch. As long as you walk under that arch with your mask in your party and uh, and him having more than 49 damage done, then he will evolve into his new form. Now, the other one, and I've got my Joy-Cons right here to give a demonstration of what we're what I'm talking about, is uh, Milkry, which evolves into Alchemy. Al Alchemy? Whatever. In order to evolve that, it has to be holding a fruit thing in its hand. I can't remember the name, so I know mine was a strawberry something. Uh, in your party, and then you have to, in the in, in any area, you can do it in a town, on a route, you have to literally just turn your joystick like this until your character does a dance move. Uh, and then after you finish your dance move, uh, Milkry will evolve into Alchemy. It's a weird... It's fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's fun. It's a it's a different way to evolve instead of just levels and trading and stones. They're bringing more things like this into the generation, and I think it's great. I think it's really cool to bring in more things like this that are different from what you normally expect to see in a Pokemon game. Um, so I think that's generally it on my thoughts on the different things. It's been pretty fairly positive, if you noticed. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but then again, I've been playing Pokemon since the first generation, and it would be hard for them to mess it up for me. Um, now, before I go into the final score here, I will touch about the, talk about the elephant in the room, uh, and that's the Dexit, as the internet has called it. I had so much fun in this game uh, that I didn't even care that I didn't have all the access to all 800 Pokemon. Uh, and even if they hadn't removed some of them, it was still going to be at least several months before you can bring in the old Pokemon anyhow. So there's still a chance. Whether they do it or not, that time will tell. Um, I don't think so. I don't think they will personally. And sure, I can't bring in my favorite Pokemon of all time. Well, prior favorite Pokemon of all time, now that, ooh, now that Morgrim exists. Um, but uh, sure, I can't bring that in. Oh, well. fine. I'm fine with that. I don't see the big deal of it. 
um, personally. I've got a full living Pokedex. I've got one of everything from Bulbasaur to whatever that electric cat was that was a mythical that they gave out uh, at events like a year or two ago now. I've got one of every Pokemon from, from there. I can't bring the majority of them up. Oh well. I've got a new game to play. I've got new Pokemon to catch. I've got new Pokemon to evolve. I love it as it is. It's perfect. Not perfect. There's no perfect game out there. Um, but as far as my score, I'd give it about an 8.5. Um, I had a lot of positivity, very little negativity. Uh, oh, wait, I forgot about the two biggest negatives I had in the game. Uh, three big, well, I talked about one of them already, and that was Steel Meowth. Um, the two biggest negatives to me were you can't turn off experience share. Uh, I've always been one that I've rarely, I've rarely used experience share unless I was, unless I was trying to bring up one really low level Pokemon up to get up, catch up with the rest of the team. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of having experience share as a non turn offable thing. Um, and then something else that I realized as I was playing the game, it's kind of a negative, kind of a positive as far as I'm concerned, but I'm going to lean it more negative is that the escape rope is a key item now. Uh, you don't have to buy escape rope, so that's positive. Uh, but they're just like, oh hey, in case you need to get out of something, here's an escape rope. So it takes away some of the planning that you need to do uh, mentally when you're going through. Now granted, there's only like two, three caves in the game, uh, comparatively speaking, to previous generations, so it's not like you're horrible. Um, but just, I, I just wasn't a fan that the escape rope was a key item. Um, so, I'm not taking off any points for that one. I'm taking off points for the experience share, uh, but I'm not taking off any points for the escape rope being a key item. Uh, that is something, some people love it, some people hate it. And I know people who love the experience share permanent. I don't. Um, so that's really it, that's my down thoughts of the game. Um, so I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, the majority of that point taking off is for Steel Meowth. Uh, I really cannot stand that thing, and once I give all mine into a Perserker, I just, nope, goodbye, never again. I do need to catch another one, though, so I can trade it to the one NPC to get the, uh, the, uh, standard meal, so I can evolve that into a Persian to fill out my Pokedex, but, oh, say la vie. All right, guys, this has been the game, uh, or my review of Pokemon, Sh Pokemon Sh Shield, excuse me, uh, Look forward to more exciting Pokemon, uh, video game reviews. I'll probably, I might do another review on Pokemon if I, if I come up with more things to talk about. Um, and I will, I'll do a separate video on the post-game story. Uh, that'll come up sometime in the week, next week or so. Uh, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, I'm going to start doing a lot more uh, videos now that I have a little bit better equipment. Uh, so be prepared for a lot of new games, a lot of new videos coming out soon. Uh, I'm going to be doing conversations with people, like you saw I've done previously, the talks to, uh, where I talked to T-Bone uh, while playing uh, Fire Pro Wrestling, more of that, so if you want to be in, with me in one of those videos, just shoot me a message, and we'll agree to a time and a date to uh, record our video. So, until then folks, this is the Game of Earth signing off, enjoy your video games.